Rub up your engines! Toyota had to apologize for cheating on vehicle testing, and they halted productions of some of their models. And here's a kid, Toyota. Look, he's bowed his head because he's shameful that they cheated. Hey, let's bring back the old style Japanese guys. They could commit Harry Carey if they were caught, right? Now they just bow their heads instead. Well, it turns out that Toyota had massive cheating on certification tests for vehicle models. And three models they had to stop making. They used inadequate or outdated data and collision tests, incorrect testing of airbag inflation and rear seat damages. And crashes. Engine power tests were also found to have been falsified. So they're saying they had more horsepower than they did. They're saying that they tested all the crash stuff correctly and they didn't. Now, Toyota says the wrongdoing doesn't affect the safety of their vehicles. We sincerely apologize, Toyota said, bowing deeply at a news conference in Tokyo. And Monday, Mazda also said they have irregular certification like that. Well, you know, Toyota and Mazda have a deal, they're building the same cars. On the same assembly line, I got it somewhere in Alabama or someplace, right? In the United States, they got a factory where they're building Toyotas and Mazdas on the same assembly line. So, partners in crime, huh? Honda Motor Company also apologized for improper tests. A lot of Japanese are cheating. Hey, I think the problem is they don't have any oversight. You know, like the, the Japanese banking had problems for a long time because there was no oversight. And they just trusted that the guys were going to be honest. And it turns out they weren't, just like these guys, right? It's becoming a dirtier and dirtier world. Then they just apologize. We humbly apologize. They got caught with their pants down. All they're doing is apologizing. I think they should have to pay fines for this stuff, right? Toyn Mommer says, Scotty, how's your Lexus doing? I'm almost 25 years old. Can you update with the video? Okay, yeah. It's 23 years old now, and it still runs like a top. Now, I'm Unfortunately, they don't make them like they used to. It was 22 years before the check engine light ever came on and it was a temperature sensor, same as a Camry, bought it at AutoZone, cost me 35 bucks, fixed it, right? I've had people bring me brand new Lexus is a few months old and the check engine light came on. They just don't have the quality that they used to. Like everything else, the bean counters are taking over and they're making them cheaper. Especially, coronavirus seemed to do a bad thing for Toyota. Now Toyota seems to be having a bunch of problems. They own Lexus. It's not an independent company. And ever since coronavirus, something's going on with Toyota. They got engines blowing up, plastic parts melting. They need to get their acting gear. Quadrajet says, Scotty, what's your opinion of a two-wheel drive forerunner? It's a four-wheel drive. Should I buy an extended warranty? Generally with a Toyota, you don't need an extended warranty, but the way things are going today, you might think about it. Now, for many people, four-wheel drive is overkill. Do you use it or not? A friend of mine's got a four-wheel drive Ford here down the street. It's 12 years old. He never used a four-wheel drive ever, and he was starting to get a noise in the four-wheel drive. He said, well, let's turn it on. I turned it on, the noise went away, because he never used it, and it didn't get enough lubrication. For most people, four-wheel drives overkill. You get worse gas mileage, costs more money to buy them, makes repairs more expensive, there's more moving parts. So if you really don't need it, my advice is don't get it. Sudeikis so says, Scotty, what would a traction ABS light be on when the data's the same as all the other three wheels. Replaced wheel bearings and ABS centers. Thank you. Okay, well, if you got an ABS light and it's for one of the wheels, but the data coming out is the same as the other three wheels and it's got a problem with that wheel, I would immediately think I'd replace the sensor because even though you see the data is coming out the same, that's just the speed, right? And frequency and stuff, other things come out, I would say replace the sensor. That's generally what happens is the sensors go bad. Or look at the sensor, they're magnetic. If there's pieces of metal, that got stuck on it, they got attracted on the road, take it out, clean it, and put it back in, and they could fix it too. Because the data that you see for just speed data, that's only part of the data that sends in. So take it out, clean it, maybe there's metal on it. If not, I'd say replace it. Melancholy Puppy says, my car is an electrical issue, drains the power. When I got back, the brake lights were on for seven hours. The site, it's a bad battery. If your brake light's on all the time, you probably just need a brake light switch. If the switch breaks, it leaves them on. Or if you got an older car, a lot of the old Japanese car, the brake light switch, strangely enough. It hits the brake lever to shut it, but the brake lever where the switches has a little rubber piece that's plugged in, and sometimes that rubber piece falls off. Then the switch goes through the hole that the rubber plug was in, and your lights will stay on. And that time, all you got to do is put a little tape around it or a piece of plastic with some JB Weld to glue it in place, and then it'll work again. So look closely. It might just be that that plastic rubber piece fell out. Now the switch goes through the hole instead of hitting the plastic piece, and it'll stay on all the time. Very easy fix. If it's not so 
set up that way, replace the brake light switch. Obama got a third term, says Scotty. I got an 01 Mazda Miata. It only has 16,000 miles on it when I bought it. Now it has 18,000. Tranny fluid's never been changed. Should I change it to 60 or just leave it? You know what I do? It's an 01 and it's really low mileage, but it's an 01. I mean, what? That's 23 years old. Just change it. Change the filter too. Change it now. Those are weak transmissions. The fluid's that old. Water vapor has gotten in. in it. Just, just change it now. Oh man, next, I've got him. I'm staying 3.7 is a lot of miles. What can I do to make it last a long time? Well, don't drive like a maniac. <laughs> change the oil every 5,000 miles with full synthetic fluid. It's an 11, so change your coolant. Make sure that's clean. If it's an automatic transmission, change the transmission fluid and the filter on it. Make it last as long as it can. Just realize it's, it's a V6 engine and the V6 engines, they eventually will wear out faster than a V8, with the exception of a kid who's got a V8 who drives the heck out of it and blows the engine because he revs it up too high, right? Most people don't drive the V6s as fast as the V8s, so they can actually last quite some time. But you said you got a lot of miles. Eventually, a V6 engine will just wear out from friction. It's strained a bit more than a V8 engine is. Prankavia says, what manufacturer has the best CVT transmission? Toyota, because they now have CVT transmission in some of the cars that have a launch gear. They actually launch on an actual gear. It's a hybrid between regular automatic and a CVT. Once it gets out of the first real launch gear, then it switches to a CVT transmission. It's very complex stuff. I watched the guy take one apart, and it just amazed me at the technology but they really work well. They tend to last a lot longer because a lot of the wear is on that first gear, which can take it. And then once you get out of first gear, the CVT transmission doesn't have to take all the strain of accelerating from a stop, and they tend to last longer. John Beer says, what do you think of a 5.9 24-valve Cummins? Okay, Cummins diesel engines are phenomenal engines. You, any little maintenance, changes the oil, don't overheat them. They can last a really long time time. It's a shame. I used to use the Cummins diesels. They're now using these Italian-made piles of crap diesel engines, and they're blowing up in the cars with low mileage. Italians don't make very good diesel engines. At least not the one that Stellantis is buying and putting in the Chrysler products. The Cummins engines are excellent engines. Junior Nunez says, I got a 99 Honda Yak Coupe. It shuts off a lot of stoplights. I don't know why. Start with the simplest thing on earth. Check the spark plugs. If they're worn, change them. Change the air filter. Right? A lot of times, that's it. That'll fix it. Now, if it doesn't, watch my video. Make your car run better with a little spray cleaner. That will show you how to clean the throttle, how to clean the mass air flow sensor. You do that video, the cleaners will cost you maybe 20 bucks for the two cans and you can clean the car eight or ten times that way, that will often keep it from stalling at stop signs. Now, if that's not it, you might have a vacuum leak. When it's idling, listen for leaks. A vacuum hose could have come off, it'll suck air, and that'll make it stop when you come to a stop, too. Just look, you see rubber hoses have rotten and fallen off, air's being sucked in, that's a very common thing, too. Tardis King says, I got 2014 Audi Q7. Its gas goes in. It sounds like a chain's rental on startup. I think it's a fuel pump, but I'm not sure. Okay, the fuel pump is in a gas tank. You hear something rattling. It's probably the time and chain. Now, watch my video, Finding the Source of Car Noise of Scotty. It's on YouTube. We mechanics have a machine. We put headphones on. It has sensors. We put the sensors in different parts. And if we'll put one by the time and chain, then we can put one in the back where the fuel pump is. They come with eight sensors. Then when you drive it, you can pinpoint by turning your machine one through eight, knowing where each number is. When you hear the noise loud, you know that's where it's coming from. You can buy a machine like that on Amazon. I bought a newer one that was cheaper. It was only 80 bucks, and it works better than the other one that was like 300 bucks. Chinese-made one works really good. It's not wireless. It has wires, but I like wire tools better. I like the wired ones because you're not dealing with wireless crap that may or may not work, get interference, get noise from spark bugs firing. The ones with wires, they don't have any interference, and you get the noise better. Tennyson Chill says, should I put electronic ignition in my Datsun 6? 20. All right, well, Datsun 620, you got an old one, it's got points and condensers, they work perfectly fine. In the back in a few years ago, you're like, well, where are you going to find those parts? Well, you can find all those parts online. I would just leave the thing alone and learn how to adjust the points and the timing and do it every once in a while. You know, they go for thousands and thousands and thousands of miles before you got to readjust them. And like I said, you can buy them online. You turn it to electronic ignition, you're going to spend a lot of money buying the parts and resetting it all. The points and condensers work perfectly fine. And the points and condensers work perfectly fine. Angel Garcia says I have a 2002 Lexus ES300. It shakes when I brake. I have new brakes and rotors. Any other suggestions? Okay. You got new brakes and rotors, but it still shakes, okay? You got some kind of a suspension problem. It could be a worn ball joint, tie rod, your steering rack. Maybe the, they're wearing inside, so it'll shake when you're going. Or a wheel bearing's worn. 
Watch my video checking out your car suspension system, Scotty. And you'll see you can jack it up. You can pull on the wheels. If they have play like that, it's usually a tie rod. If they have play like this, it's usually a ball joint. If they have play all 360 degrees around, it's a wheel bearing. Check that and you'll find you got some kind of suspension problem that's making it do that. When you brake, it accentuates the pressure on the suspension system. So whatever's worn is going to make it shake when you brake, especially when you brake harder. Any place, so Scotty, what do you think of a 2020? 24 Chevy Colorado. Okay. I am not a fan of GM products. Now, strangely enough, a few years ago, they were decent engines. They don't make those engines anymore, and they were great engines. I'd seen them with 200,000, ran fine, didn't burn oil, right? But the newer GM engines aren't that great. I would not buy a 2024 Chevy Colorado. I don't like the engines that they're putting in them. I don't like these four-cylinder little toy ones, and I believe they're thinking about putting a three-cylinder one in. I, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like the quality of GM lately. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.